Fireworks here in Saudi Arabia. I tell you what, the inaugural Saudi Arabian Grand Prix did not disappoint. I don't think I've ever seen such a crazy race uh, in all my time following Formula One. Will Buxton with you for F1 Live, your post-race show, and I'm delighted to be joined by 11-time Grand Prix winner Felipe Massa. Felipe, what did we just see? Unbelievable race. But everything that it happened since the beginning, and uh, what a beautiful place also to be. <laughs> as a track, as a show, so I'm so happy to be here. Me too, me too. Let's get to the results at the end of this Grand Prix before we go any further and delve into how what happened happened. Because Lewis Hamilton is your Grand Prix winner from Max Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas at the end of 50 laps of confusion and chaos. Bottas taking that third place over the line from Esteban Ocon in fourth place for Alpine, then Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Antonio Giovinazzi and Lando Norris rounding out the top 10. I bet they're not finished yet. No, they're not. Uh, narrowly missing out on the points today uh, in P11. It was Lance Stroll, then Nicholas Latifi, Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda and Kimi Raikkonen, Vettel, Perez, Mazepin, Russell and Schumacher all failed to finish the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Felipe, where, where do we start with this? Because this was a race which started. Lewis Hamilton on pole, Bottas second, Verstappen third but punctuated by red flags, punctuated with controversy all the way through, some great passes, some great moves, some really messy moments as well. Both Red Bull and Mercedes furious with their rival teams and drivers, furious with the FIA. Can you surmise and wrap up exactly what we've seen today? Yeah, I think we have everything this race. Red flags, some uh, uh, incidents that uh, create these red flags, also some uh, pieces on the ground that create some many, two, three, four, I don't remember, uh, virtual <laughs> safety cars, yeah. uh, but also uh, some fights, you know, uh, in the track, but also some strange things yeah. that happens on this race, but also Max trying, even the on the start when he didn't do a good start he tried everything he could even the uh, too much uh, and they touch uh, a few times so I, I would say uh, yeah I mean it happens everything in this race so I don't know even where we start actually you know well let's have a look uh, this was the original race yeah. start Lewis Hamilton getting a, a great getaway Max Verstappen against Valtteri Bottas and it was pretty much as it had been from the start locking into their positions all good then Mick Schumacher crashed and under the safety car, Mercedes came in, pitted their drivers. Max Verstappen was left in the lead of the race. And then with that red flag that came out, it was actually Verstappen that was left in P1. A free pit stop for him, changed his tyres onto the hard, made the race start. Hamilton here, great start. Yeah, I think in the, in the first start, everything was pretty much normal. You know, then we have uh, the, the, the crash from Mick. But then from now on, everything changed. Everything you see that uh, Max didn't do a good start uh, from outside, from the first position, but then Lewis just was easy in the front. Then we have the crash Carnage here from, behind. from Paris, even the, from um, uh, um, Mazepin, yep. that uh, had a big hit. And then the second well. race start with Ocon now on pole, Hamilton second and Verstappen third, as he'd had to give two positions back. And this move from Max for the lead of the race, phenomenal. Phenomenal. This, this move was really phenomenal. And, uh, but he was trying everything. Since the, the, the second start of the race, Max was trying everything. Even if he was not in the good position to try, he was trying everything over Lewis. And now this, he, he tried everything also with a bit a better grip in terms of tight because he was uh, uh, on the medium, Lewis on the hard. And he tried everything and he, Lewis even had a, a touch, you know, into the Ocon's car. Uh, but luckily, front wing. L very lucky uh, yeah, also very Lewis, lucky. Uh, on, on this race because two times he hit the front wing and he was even doing the quickest lap <laughs> at the end of the race. The, the second time that he damaged his front wing, of course, was because of that restart. Actually, it wasn't the restart. There's so many events have happened today. Uh, when Lewis went for the pass, I should say, yeah. on Max Verstappen. Max, very late breaking. Lewis, very late breaking. They both ran off deep. 
Max was told he had to give that position back to Lewis Hamilton. He slowed substantially on the back stretch to allow Hamilton past. Hamilton plowed into the back of Verstappen, not really understanding what was going on. And from then it got, if it wasn't already, it got quite nasty. It got quite yeah. vicious between them. Uh, this is the moment. Yeah. Hamilton then, uh, with the DRS, and he with was the move. in front. Oh, it was uh, quite a good amount in front on the braking, and then Max just tried to brake really, really late. Bowles Snap. actually went snap went straight even lewis went straight uh, a bit but it was quite obvious that uh, max was just trying everything he could on the braking uh, so then after it happens everything that nobody expected in the race like uh, maybe if the team asked him i, I didn't hear in the radio uh, they didn't show actually if the team asked him to let him by uh, but in the way he did it was really strange so we'll get into that in a minute because the team asked him to let Lewis through. Hamilton makes contact with the back of Verstappen. Then Max has to let him through again. He does let him through at the final corner, plays it quite neatly, immediately has a DRS, overtakes Lewis again, then lets him through again. Uh, this, the moment then, yeah. uh, that uh, I think is the, 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 the moment. Yes, this is, he's slowing down for him. And Lewis straight into the back of him. Yeah. Now, does Max jink at the last moment there? For me, he starts to slow down and then suddenly he starts to move into the middle of the track. When you slow down, you stay outside. I mean, you, you show that you are, you are giving the position, but he, he went to the middle of the track. This was then, the first proper give back then yeah. after that damage. And then this... This was the, the last well, this, time. This actually was the last time that when Lewis passed and uh, after and that done. nothing happens anymore. But for me, what was strange is that Max slowed down a bit on the right and then suddenly he starts to go in the middle of the track and he starts to break a bit too much in, in my the middle view, of the track. In the middle of the track. It's a bit strange. So in my view, uh, five seconds was uh, uh, yes, we should quite a Max small penalty. Five second penalty. Yeah. We'll come on to this more in a minute. I want to talk to Antonio Giovinazzi. Uh, Antonio, a crazy race today, but points for you. You raced really, really well. Uh, what was it like out there? The intensity, the physicality of it, the confusion of today's race? Ah, physically it was really hard, you know, uh, last time I remember was Singapore in 2019, you know, really the humidity really high, street track, so you need to focus a lot more. Three restart, you know, jump out of the car, so also you lose a little bit of, uh, of focus, you know, so it was not, uh, was for sure it was not, uh, not good for, for, our, uh, for ourselves, but in the end, you know, I think uh, for myself, again, always position every restart, so this was good. We run for uh, most of the, half of the race in P7 in front of the Ferrari, then uh, in the end, the pace was not enough uh, good for, for keep them behind. But yeah, really happy with P9. I think uh, we deserve this result, you know, after a long time, so many times too close to the points, good qualify, but not enough for, uh, for the race. And now finally we are in top 10. And it's been a great weekend. Top 10 in qualifying, pace all the way through. Were you expecting this when you arrived here or has it come a little bit by surprise? Uh, I don't know, to be honest, you know, I was coming from Formula E that I think Felipe can confirm, you know, it's uh, so different, the car, and I was a little worried, you know, how long will it take for me to, to come back to Formula 1 in a street track, new track. But actually, you know, FP1 was great, feel already really good with the car. And uh, since there, you know, we've always been good, like you say, qualifying was great. And now today it was just, you know, try to put all together and uh, finally, we, with also a little bit of luck, we score points. Lovely stuff. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. Congratulations. Thank really you. great weekend. He did have a good weekend. Yeah, that very, very good weekend. Very good race. Very good qualifying. Uh, you know, ju just trying to show that, uh, okay, I'm losing uh, my place uh, in the team, but I mean, I'm just showing what he's able to do. And how difficult is it to come from testing Formula E? Very difficult. Straight into an <laughs> F1 car on a track like this? Very difficult. Completely different cars uh, in terms of grip level, in terms of the way you need to drive. Is a, is a really, really dif different, but these guys, I mean, they, they are Formula One, I mean, drivers, they, they understand how to pick it up quickly, track plus the car, so at the end, he just, uh, he didn't really lose anything by going to, to do this uh, couple of days uh, testing Formula E. Before uh, we move the show on, and we will discuss more about Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, exactly what went down today, the reasons behind it, the penalties, and what Felipe thinks is behind the motivation of both drivers at the moment. I just want to ask about this circuit, the intensity of it, the speed. You've raced at Monaco, you've raced at Singapore, but Formula One has never raced on a track quite like this. No, it was incredible to, because we are outside, you know, I'm not in the car anymore, so we are outside. 
It's unbelievable to see how quick you feel the speed by even being outside. So I went to the track. It's so many high speed corners with the wall, you know, just there. So, and it's a very intense, mm. very intense to drive here to do a perfect lap. You see how many drivers making a little mistake in the qualifying just to put the lap together. So, and uh, also some, some even crashes, you know, around. So it was a really uh, nice circuit to watch, intense, and uh, not easy, I would say. Not easy uh, at all. One guy who hasn't had an easy day, but has had a, a pretty action-packed day, Carlos Sainz. A, a crazy race, a mad, intense battle with your teammate. Tell, <laughs> us, tell us about your Grand Prix. Yeah, it was, uh, it was nice and intense. Um, ah, the first 13 laps on the hard tire, I was very quick. I made up something like five positions in 10 laps. Heart was feeling amazing, and, and, uh, and I was feeling really comfortable. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to get them pretty quickly. But the uh, red flag came out. It allowed me to keep the position in ninth, but it forced me onto a medium for 37 laps, which was a, a long stint. Uh, it meant that at the restart, I could get Charles and, uh, and pass him, pull away from him. But uh, uh, then little by little, he started catching back on the hard tire. I was starting to really struggle on the medium on such a long stint. Uh, last five laps, I was on the canvas, front right, rear right. I nearly crashed in a couple of corners trying to stay ahead. Wow. And uh, in the end, I, I had to concede P, P7, no? But uh, from 15th and with everything that happened, I don't think I can complain too much. I know you've got to go, but you enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah, it was good fun. You guys, I hope, enjoyed it too. Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll be here all night. Um, a bit crazy, the circuit and everything, no? A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, <laughs> um, great drive. Yeah. from him today, really, particularly really from where race. he started the Grand Prix. Yeah. You know, didn't make it uh, out of Q2, had that crash, started way down the order. Great run from Carlos. Really great race he did. Uh, it's true. I mean, actually, he was a little bit... He needs to, to, to risk and put the, the medium tires, but maybe it was not enough to go to the end. 37 laps, as he said, uh, on the same tires. Uh, but he did a fantastic race. Maybe if he had the hard tires on the second part, maybe he could have finished even mm. more in front. Let's hear from his teammate, uh, Charles Leclerc, who has been in the pen uh, talking to Lawrence Barreto. Hey, Charles, that early phase of the race looked OK. And then obviously that moment with Pacheco, what went through your mind? It's a shame. It's a shame. The first part of the race was really, really competitive. I mean, I, I was trying to save the tyres as much as possible, but it's not like the three guys in front were pulling away. Uh, then there was a VSC and I was like, oh, that's great for us. And then five laps, four laps later or whatever. Red flag and obviously we lost a bit of positions there. Then we had to put the hard for the restarts and I don't know what went wrong there, but we struggled massively with the warm up on the hard and, and I lost a lot of positions with the two, uh, well, I mean, not the two restarts, there's been a lot of restarts today and, uh, and on the hard tires, it was a disaster. So I lost positions at every restart. And then with the pace, I could make up for for the space lost, but uh, but not enough, obviously, and the potential was much better today. And you came under significant pressure from your teammate for a lot of the race. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, Carlos uh, was uh, behind at first, and then he overtook me uh, while I was struggling in the first few laps with the hard, and uh, and then I had quite a, a good pace actually. Uh, I managed to overtake him two laps to the end. It was a good battle. Um, we we enjoyed it. I think both of us. Um, and yeah, the pace was strong, but uh, I can only be disappointed uh, looking at the first part of the race. We were very, very strong, so it's a shame we couldn't uh, capitalize on that. Yeah, now uh, Leclerc has been called to see the stewards after the race for that first restart. Obviously, he was the sort of the meat in a bit of the wall and Perez sandwich. From your perspective, watching that, did Charles have anywhere he could go? No, I don't think so. I think it was a race incident. Uh, maybe even the um, uh, Czech could have looked that he was there, so maybe he just turned even a, a little bit to the left. Uh, so, but I would say it was a race incident. You're a former Ferrari driver. What kind of a job have Ferrari done this season? Because they started off fifth, yeah. sixth, pretty much in terms of overall speed. And um, oh, I've just got to say, for this guy here, great what a race. race. What a race, man. Congrats, man. Really, really great race. What a great race. You, Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Um, what a year Ferrari have had to turn around that disappointing yeah. start to be third in the constructors. I don't think McLaren really can do anything about that, that now. What a, what a job they've done. Well, they did a really good job in terms of uh, you know, improving the car, in terms of uh, also get the points. Uh, put, putting the pressure over the McLaren team. Uh, 
as a Ferrari, you can never say you are happy, you know, to finish third in the construction championship. But in the way, they did a really, really good job for fighting to with these guys here. Yeah, they did. Uh, Lando, I mean, we've been watching from the outside. It was confusing. It's crazy. How was it in the cockpit? Probably the same, really. Um, uh, yeah, like just a long, long race. Sucked a lot because um, the whole race got taken away from me with the, the red flag and people being able to change tyres for free. So, um, yeah, frustrating because, you know, we have such a tough weekend. I did a good job yesterday and so a uh, good job yesterday and so on. And uh, I think it's just a, a stupid rule to, to have from um, being able to change pits like the tyres for, for free like that. We seem to discuss this a lot after red flags that and I know we've had this chat too many discussions they need to change it I think they should give me access to the rule book the official PDF I press edit and I just erase it just take it straight select out. it right click delete do you think the GPTA will push for that um, thing is it obviously benefits people so they're like every time it's happened um, Monza last year obviously uh, it happened and we should have had a, a one two with, with Daniel and myself and then, of course, Pierre won. Um, Mugello last year as well, or yeah, two years ago maybe, last year. And, um, and here again, I've always been on the, the bad side, so I've always been the one who's been unlucky. Um, and it's not as simple as just saying wait longer and, and whatever, you know, so especially today, it was like four or five laps of VSC uh, or safety car, and then they brought the red flag out, so. I don't know what to say, like, I just try so hard, I put so much effort in, and, um, like people just get free pit stops and I get completely um, put to the back of the grid for, for no reason. So, Talk to me quickly about the intensity of this place. 50 laps, a Grand Prix distance, okay, a couple of red flags at the yeah. start, but the commitment, mental, physical strength yeah, you need I think, for that today. Um, it's probably mentally one of the toughest, or probably is the toughest of the whole year. Um, just because there's, there's so many corners, things can go wrong. Basically every single corner, something can happen. Uh, the majority of them, something big and, and bad can happen. Um, and what makes it even tougher is because the walls are so close, you have a lot of like this, um, everyone calls it the pumping effect, but like the, the slipstream effect. And because of the walls, all the air is, is going with the cars. So if you're like 10th or 13th or 15th, you basically have zero downforce. And um, it's like one of the trickiest things uh, in the world to, to try and manage. And like Fernando, Fernando spun because you get like these pockets. So like one, one second you have downforce, the next second is completely gone. So like. It's hard to describe, I'm sure Felipe knows, but it's hard to describe how difficult, how much like you risk and, and push and risk crashing every every corner just to get one point in the end of the day. So Well, enjoy that one point. And I will. Thank it's you amazing. for coming on, man. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, Lando. Uh, what's that like when you just lose the downforce? Actually, I was going to ask the same question as you did. You know, describe what you think about the, the track. Mentally, also, how was the race there? You know, how much? You lose downforce when you are behind, especially these really, really long and high-speed uh, corners, uh, one after the other. So at the end, uh, uh, he described well. So it's what actually you can see that it's a very difficult track to race, mm. uh, but and very intense all the time. So mentally, I think maybe one of the most difficult ones, as he just said. Right. Uh, let's get serious now and let's delve into Max and Lewis and what on earth happened at the front of this Grand Prix. But let's start back in the studio. Sam Collins has had a bit of time to digest what went down in the race, to look deeper at it. Sam, it was a race of chaos in part, confusion in a great part, a lot of penalties as well, my friend. Uh, tell us what you've been looking at and what you think at the end of this Grand Prix. Well, the chaos and confusion, Will, are far, far from over. So I'm just going to read through what I've been getting, but it's the FIA race control system is still pinging away at this point of the weekend. So the first little confirmation is Yuki Tsunoda got a five-second penalty for causing a collision with Sebastian Vettel and also gained himself two penalty points on his licence. You already noted the fact that Charles Leclerc has been called to race control for that, first, that start line incident but we're also seeing that Sergio Perez has been summoned as well. That's the uh, incident that caught, as you can see on your screen, that is given uh, 
the Japanese driver a one-point driver's penalty. You're only allowed 12 in a season. He's up to eight points already. Max Verstappen was has been summoned to race control for the Turn 27 incident, the, uh, the so-called brake test with Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton has also been summoned to race control to discuss that. And uh, whether we get a penalty before the end of this show, we'll keep you posted. And then on top of that, Max Verstappen has also been summoned to race control for another moment. Here you see Lewis Hamilton, though. I mean, this is the question. A lot of people are calling this a brake test, and uh, he certainly decelerated from eighth gear down to third, and that's a lot on a straight section of track. But we did hear there's a bit of confusion going on. So that's going to be discussed up in race control. I think those discussions will start quite soon. And the other bit of news is that five-second time penalty that Max Verstappen got for passing at turn one off the track has come with a single point or penalty point on his driver's license and that will see Verstappen up to five points. So this is where you might earn yourself a little bit more penalty points. So this is the moment where Verstappen kept on, went off track, forced Hamilton off track. That was a five second time penalty because he didn't give the position back even though he later did and then got a one one point driver's penalty. But the Hamilton and Verstappen race control shenanigans are far far from over and I'd love to hear what both you and Felipe think about these situations because it is developing as we speak. Volume well, you, you will hear uh, all too soon, just after we finished talking to Mr. Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel, when you, when you damaged the floor yesterday and weren't very happy after qualifying, I bet you would have taken a P5. Yes, because I, I truly believe I could have been in top five in, in Q3. Um, and uh, yeah, it was... Uh, Anyway, yesterday was yesterday, but uh, it really was a small little thing. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we should have damaged it with what we did. So I think that was a frustration. Obviously, I just felt unlucky as much as I don't like to use that word. Um, but today was, uh, was good. You know, I made, made progress on the starts and had decent pace. I think the medium was a little more tricky, definitely in, in that last um, part of the race. So I couldn't really challenge Esteban um, for that, what was looking like a potential podium but ultimately happy with the uh, top five and last few laps on the medium were a little tricky. Uh, so happy to have held on. I saw you before the race, just doing some stretching and then I saw you and you were doing like the Rocky Balboa <laughs> stretching. You are looking forward for the race? I, I was, I was. Uh, yeah, I don't know, so, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes a bad, a bad qualifying makes some, uh, a Sunday much more fun for me. I, I, see, I see red mist. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted, I really, I was really excited to race today. And I tried to control a lot of that, let's say, emotion that I had. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> One race left. Are you going to be happy to see the back of this car and this season? Because I know it's been an up and down one. Kind of have that clean piece of paper for next year. Yeah, I think, I mean, even like season results aside, I'm just, Honestly, happy for it to be over in terms of a uh, just long. It know, has been I'm long tired. <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> especially when the race finishes at 11 p.m. or something. It's it's a little too late. So hopefully they they bring the race forward next year. But um, yeah, I just I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. So I'm, I mean, look, obviously one last push for the last one. I'll, I'll use all the energy I've got left, but then I'll probably sleep for 10, 12 days. Sleep until March. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. Yeah, right. Sweet. Um, right, well done, dude. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Sam was uh, talking about the penalties, talking about the incidents. Max Verstappen said on the radio after the race when he was given driver of the day, the fans clearly, and I'm paraphrasing, the fans clearly know what racing is. Does Max Verstappen know what racing is? Does he take things too far? Or is it too regulated now? for racing to be able to exist as racing has and does? Well, it's true. I mean, the fans want to see fire in the house. You know, the fans want to see the fight on the track. Uh, this is clear. I want, I want to see the same, you know. Uh, but for me today, he was a little bit over the limit. Why do you think that was? Because I think he was a little bit, first of all, he tried really in an aggressive way uh, over uh, Lewis uh, on the on, on the first uh, on the second uh, restart of the race when he didn't do a good start, so he just break too late, and uh, he you know I, I think they they almost touch each other because of for sure because of Max 
a uh, couple of times, and uh, and then it, you know, that uh, strange incident just happens just after that. So I think maybe it was a little bit uh, far off the limit. We've seen these guys go wheel to wheel all the way through this year. We've seen the intensity rise. Max knew he could win the title today. Do you think he was racing in a way to try and ensure the title for himself today? Uh, it was. It was what we looks like you know in the track watching the race uh, so now is another race zero points they are zero equal but max has more victory so let's see what's going to happen in the last one what do you think will happen in no, the last I mean, one i i really hope they really try their best you know to to win uh in, in the track in the right way so that's really what i hope and uh, what, what i want to see you know uh, really fire in the house in the right way but you never know so this year you know, so many things happen in many different races, so let's wait and see. Is it, is it a disappointment that we have these two incredible racing drivers fighting for a world championship? 21 races down, level on points. There's never been an end to a Formula One season like this, ever, in the history of the sport. But the, all we're talking about at the moment are the incidents where they've come together, the controversies. We saw today those two guys pushing each other, lap for lap for lap, around this insane circuit, pulling a gap over everyone, you know, proving without a shadow of a doubt they are the two best drivers in this sport, bar none, this yeah. year. But all we're talking about are the controversies. Yeah, controversies, you know, we, we saw this year some controversies, you know, some fights, you know, some uh, even race that they finish in the gravel, even race that they finish in the gravel, one over the other one, uh, even race that uh, Max had a big crash uh, in the Silverstone. Uh, so they touch each other many times this year, which you know, in the in the in the correct way, is what we want to see. Yeah. You know, at the end. Uh, but you know, at the end, I mean, we have the rules, and it's important to follow. Uh, but I'm not so sure how much uh, uh, following the rules in the right way will happen in the last race. Because the know? body language between those two yeah. on the podium today, I think, said everything. Yeah. They didn't look at yeah. each other. Verstappen yeah. walked off before the celebration even began. I mean, they look like they wanted to tear each other apart. And we cannot forget that, I mean, we have a few days until everything started again. And it will be a lot of talks around, you know, from the teams, because it's not only the drivers uh, anymore. So it's also the teams talking one against the other. And I, I think we're going to, we will hear a lot <laughs> these uh, few days until maybe Friday starts. Well, I tell you what. Let's hear from Lewis Hamilton. We can hear from the race winner, the man level on points at the top of the World Championship, Lewis Hamilton, uh, after victory here in Saudi Arabia. Hey, Lewis, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I heard you say that's more like it on the team radio. We saw how energised you were. What does it mean to you to come out on top in what was a really tricky race? Yeah, uh, I think it's just the fight is so, so deeply great. Like, I've, I've been with this team 10 years. I've seen, the t I've seen the passion all these years. I don't think I've seen as what they've just shown me there, coming down the pit lane and at the, at the end of the race. It was, it's on a different level, the energy. We're all hype. The, the fight is, is so is spectacular and I appreciate it. And it's just difficult out there, you know, when you've got, uh, it's difficult to fight with a driver that doesn't have doesn't work with the same rule book you know and um, yeah but I tried with, every, with everything I had to just keep the car on the track and do it do it the right way and um, yeah but anyways we, we we persevered as a team and I'm grateful for everyone's hard work and you're going to the final race level on points I mean it couldn't be set up for one race shootout any better could it uh, yeah no for sure it's it's definitely, um, <laughs> who would have thought when we got to this point it would be like this, but, uh, but I, felt, I felt great. Um, I, I generally felt great. Um, yeah, so I just try and keep my head down for this next one next week and, and try and deliver the best result we can. Congratulations. Thank you. Chris. Uh, your race winner there, um, not effusive with celebration he has been on an incredible run really since brazil when he had his back against the wall you've raced lewis hamilton you fought for a world championship against lewis hamilton how potent a challenge is he when he feels that 
he's been wronged, when he has his back against the wall and he comes out swinging? Yeah. I think after Mexico, I was there and uh, I didn't see Lewis really with the comfortable, you know, after Mexico. And uh, I don't know, he was just uh, not, you know, with the face, you know, with happy, like a uh, concentrate or anyway, comfortable. After Brazil, I saw him in, uh, when he arrived in Brazil and he saw all the fans for him in Brazil. Um, he changed his attitude, he changed his face, he changed his uh, concentration, uh, motivation, I, I don't know. But he was completely different. I mean, the, what he showed in Brazil was just incredible during the whole weekend. And I told him, I said, for me, you were not the driver of the day, you were the driver of the weekend because you, you, you did a fantastic job there, Saturday and Sunday, sprint race, race. Uh, but also in, in, in Doha, in Doha he was just amazing, I mean, quick. For sure, the car also, they made a, a, a good step, but he's just in driving in the perfect way. Uh, and here the same, for sure here, uh, Max was really good in the qualifying. Maybe he's supposed to have the pole position, but he made maybe the first mistake of the season, you know? I'm not talking about the, the touches with Lewis, I'm talking about like a mistake, locking wheel or whatever. He made the first mistake of, of the season, he lost the pole position. And in the race, everything happened in this way. But I, I see Lewis really, Strong. Max has been inarguably phenomenal all year. Yeah. Been fantastic. Would deserve the world championship if it was to come to him. But as you say, mistake in qualifying. It was a great. It was a great lap for 26 corners. Yeah. But then the mistake. Today, he looked rattled. Yeah. He looked angry. Has Lewis got inside his head, or with Max? Is that just Max when he's on maximum attack? He's just, he's like that. That's, that's just how he is. For you. I think that's the way he is. The only thing I can say is that uh, maybe before this race, he really deserved the championship. So this race was not the same match as what we saw before. Interesting, okay. You know? So now, I mean, uh, he, in my view, I, I was even saying that I, mean, I think he really deserved the championship because it's nice to see a driver, like, for everything that he did this year, he really he deserved the championship. But I mean, he needs to keep doing what he was doing, uh, you know, before all the time until maybe the qualifying yesterday. And I've got to ask this then. This is the first weekend where Max has ever had the possibility to take a Formula One World Championship. Yeah. Is there a possibility that for all of him saying, I'm not thinking about it, it's not getting to me, I just, I've got to focus on the small things, not the championship. Did he? Did it, did it, did it get to him? Yeah, I think... Um you know, uh, every every track, every race, a different situation. It's a different track, so we know that uh, Abu Dhabi, you have some long straights, uh, but also the last sector will be a Red Bull sector. Uh, first and second sector, we don't know. Maybe even Mercedes can be strong there. Uh, so, but it's true that um, um, you know any any single thing can change everything. And and this weekend he had the chance, maybe even in mind that I mean, he could have win the championship. But now they arrive in the track. Zero points different, so the the preparation for the last race will be very important for both of them. Absolutely. Uh, we can hear then from Max Verstappen, second on the road today still, your world championship leader level on points with Lewis Hamilton. Max, you gave everything out there today and it just didn't quite pan out, did it? Uh, yeah. Of course, when they told me... Um, when they told me... Um, that I had the, the five second penalty was not worth fighting anymore because uh, I would never pull a gap of five seconds. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of action, a lot of uh, things that happened. Um, I think ultimately we didn't really have perfect uh, pace in the race. Maybe also um, the, the medium tyres were, were not amazing to the end. I think the hard tyres, of course, they had a bit more life in them, I think, but that's always easy to say uh, afterwards. There were some really close moves between you and Lewis multiple times. What are your views on all of those? Well, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of moves. Um, yeah, the end, that five second penalty I don't think is uh, is correct. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't want to talk about it too much because they don't deserve any word coming out of my mouth. Too but, but what was your view? He wasn't that impressed about the point when he hit into the back of you. What was your view of that moment? I, they told me to give the position back, and so immediately when I heard that on the radio, I just pulled off to the right, you know, showing that I was going to um, uh, move over and I, I break, downshift and he just stayed behind me 
So I was just looking in the mirror and I'm slowing down and then I think it was a bit of a miscommunication where he then ran into the back of me. Hard luck, thank you. So. There's, uh, there's no love loss between those two guys going into this final race, Felipe. It obviously, quite clearly, couldn't be any closer between the two of them. Who do you think right now has, has the edge? Who has the upper hand? Well, I, I see that maybe Lewis is a little bit more straightforward and Max is a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, feeling a little bit of pressure, you know, for, for what's happened today. We know that, I mean, a little thing can decide at the end, you know. So definitely uh, Lewis for all of the, the last three races, what he did uh, uh, can give him a little bit more motivation or maybe be a little bit more calm to do his job in the right way. And Max uh, maybe is feeling a little bit of pressure for, for what's happened and, and for, the, for the pace Mercedes yeah. shows and Lewis shows in the last three races. Before we leave the penalties, Max received a five second penalty at the end of the race despite give, ultimately he did give the place back to Lewis. Did he deserve a five second penalty having already given that place away? Or did he not give the place away soon enough? Uh, yeah, I think he deserved it, yeah. He deserved a penalty, definitely. For what's happened today, in my view, uh, the penalty was correct. Uh, Maybe could have been even the 10 seconds, I would say. Wow. OK, 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 cool, 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 cool. Um, it, it is turning into the most uh, incredible season between these two guys. Um, we will be hearing from Christian Horner later uh, in the show. We'll also be hearing from Valtteri Bottas and, of course, Esteban Ocon, uh, who we saw a little bit earlier. Let's talk, if we can, very quickly about Ocon and the race that he had today. Of course, found himself on pole. Uh, leading yeah. away from one of the one yeah. of the one of the restarts and uh, drove beautifully up to the end, just nipped by Bottas over the line. Well, he did a fantastic race, so he deserved the podium. Also, I mean, yeah. in the last uh, meter, he just lost the the third place and the podium. So, he he did a fantastic race, very strong, very consistent. Um, it's nice to see, you know, a race like that uh, from uh, uh, from Ocon. Uh, but also uh, something that we forgot just to, to say, I mean, the strategy of the safety car. Yeah. So this, uh, it was a good help for Daniel, it was a good help for uh, uh, Ocon as well, uh, and also for Max. Definitely Max chose different tires, so going in the middle instead of going to the hard. This would, would change uh, something on the race, we don't know. No. That's the only thing. Um, let's hear from Esteban Ocon. I think we can do that, can't we? Yes, we can. Uh, Esteban Ocon, who so nearly finished on the podium today, uh, as it was narrowly beaten into P4. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Esteban. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, a tenth just on the line. I mean, what's going through your mind? It's difficult, <laughs> difficult uh, feelings right now. Uh, we gave it all uh, in that race, clearly. Um, it's a frustrating end, um, of course, because we had that third place for, for the whole race. Um, the team did an amazing job, you know, the, the car was, uh, was spot on, but we are fighting on a different league uh, compared to, to Mercedes. And yeah, to, to lose that third place, I don't know, 10 seconds from the, from the line, yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. But, uh, you know, it's the plan, as Fernando would call it, you know, we are getting there, we are getting where we want, we extract the maximum out of the car. And once we are going to have that pace that the others have, we are going to be dangerous. And that's what we are working towards. So I'm extremely proud of all the stuff, all the decisions we took. Everything was mega spot on. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a difficult end, obviously. There were some hungry vibes when you found yourself in the lead and you, it was all going your way at the start. Did you think maybe, maybe, just maybe, it could work out again? You know, I was going to take any opportunity I could, <laughs> for sure. Um, there was a lot of contact in that race, uh, but the first two starts, I gained four places. Um, each time I was getting two position until the last one where we had a little bit older tyres. But I was not fighting against Lewis and Max, I knew that. Uh, you know, I let them go and they did their own race. But from, uh, from that behind, it was the aim to keep third place. And we did so until, uh, until you know, far into the race. So, you know, next time. Uh, we could feel that Esteban was was just gutted on his way through. Uh, he drove beautifully today, as, as beautifully. we've said, but uh, a, a good season for him as well. He and Fernando just reacting so well as teammates. Yeah, and I mean, he did a great race this season, both of them. Even he won a race, yeah. uh, uh, Ocon. So I think uh, the race he did today was really fantastic. He, he must be really happy.
Hello, Toto. Um, yes, we, we have to still do the COVID thing, uh, I'm afraid. Um, hello, Toto. That was, there was something, uh, wasn't it? Uh, talk to us about, I think that the key question everyone would have after this race is, is communication and clarity of, of communication. How clear did you feel things were communicated to you to enable you to then communicate clearly to your drivers? You know, I'm so uh, uh, confused at the moment and I need to rewatch the race tomorrow because uh, was there a lack of communication internally with us uh, in respect of that incident, for example, or externally. So, um, and then the stopping, uh, safety cars, red flags, VSCs. But uh, yeah, at the moment I can't make a judgment. Um, were you informed that Max had been informed to give the position to Lewis at the point of the contact at the back of the circuit? I guess Max was informed, um, but I'm not sure we were informed or whether we were informed and didn't give the message to Lewis. Uh, it was an odd, an odd position to do that. And at the end we saw it in the second overtaking um, to have the DRS effect uh, on the straight. So yeah, the students need to look at it. So. I don't want to judge Max at fault here or Luis at fault or us or the FIA. OK, um, if, if I can roll back then a, a little bit to the decisions that were made today as they were taken. Is it a, a case of processes within the team? Are you happy with, with the processes as they were that, that, that you made today? In the team? Yeah, within the team. Yeah, I think... Uh, as good as it could be, the call on the pit um, under, under um, safety car was the right one. I think uh, the other guys took a big risk because if more people would have pitted and no, uh, and no red flag, then they would have come out pretty much um, in the midfield. And all the other calls were good as well. I think the, the, the team didn't make any, any mistakes. Maybe um, that we didn't communicate in the right way if we got the information. Toto, what's happened here now? Uh... Even uh, whatever thing we, we talk uh, is already in the past. So you guys won the race, uh, zero points. So let's speak about next race. What will be the preparation? And also, what do you think is going to be the, the driver's mind for the last race, Lewis and also Max? I think we are all happy today um, about the one and three. But um, I need to bite my words at the moment because in seven days, there will be another result and I, I still hope that we are, we, we are going to be uh, happy as now, but we just need to come down, uh, really prepare well for next week, have a strong racing car like we had today, have no reliability issue because uh, if we have that, the championship is, is gone with it, uh, within a second and then all the fun today was, was destroyed next week. You said that Lewis has superpowers when he has his back against the wall. We were just talking about it earlier that after Mexico into Brazil, the side we've seen of Lewis is almost un unstoppable. Yeah, almost unstoppable. I'm, I mean, he had the broken front, uh, 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 front wing end plate and he went faster uh, and posted proper time. So he's in a great, great headspace. Where do you, you think that comes from in Adversity. Him? That was for adversity for all his from all his life. But if I have, I have, sorry, I have a question. Did you see other drivers that hit the front wing two times, like what Lewis did today, and do the quickest lap at the end of the race? Did you? I never saw that in never Formula 1. <laughs> and in that respect, maybe the how we lost the front wings with Esteban, nobody was at fault. Um, um, with Max, these guys will decide, but we could have been out of the race twice. And uh, so we, there was uh, someone also watching on us. Can you believe we go to the last race level on points between these two incredible racing drivers? Fantastic. No, uh, we, we, we didn't think that we would be in that position. Uh, we were so far ahead. Our car pace was not good over the course of the season. Then since, since Brazil, since we had that massive um, penalty uh, in the yeah. sprint qualifying race, it, started, it looked like it's, it's over. And here we are, equal points and uh, made the best man win. Absolutely. Where would this rank for you? And what would it mean to you if you could take one, both championships, this year, given the challenge that you faced? You know, I, I need to manage my own expectations. If I think now we're continuing to fly like Superman uh, and the next week we, we, we have a negative weekend, that will be even worse. So I'm happy where we are. This morning I woke up and thought it's a privilege to be in such a championship that is so intense. Maybe in 10 years we will look back and say, that was fantastic, whatever the outcome was. We are not going anywhere. There's another championship, but this one 
was so difficult and intense that it would be feeling good if, big word, if. Thank you so much for coming on Thank the you. show. Appreciate it, Toto. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's hear now then uh, from his major rival in the championship, of course, Christian Horner, uh, team boss at Red Bull Racing. Yes, I'm here with Christian Horner. Uh, Christian, that was the most confusing race to watch. I can't imagine what it must have been like for you on the pit wall. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything like it before? No, I mean, there was uh, obviously an awful lot of damage and debris for, for race control to be dealing with, an awful lot of incidents. Um, uh, yeah, obviously, a, a very de demanding and, and challenging track. So, uh, so, so yeah, um, you know, frustrating race uh, in that respect. I think in the end, we were probably lucky to get away with second with the damage that we had at the back of the car so um, you know it goes down to the wire in Abu Dhabi I thought at the beginning of the year it would go all the way to Abu Dhabi unfortunately um, well, fortunately for all the fans it's it you know there's there's nothing between them there's just one race victory between them so let's uh, let's see where it finishes we also saw offers given to you under a red flag. I'm not sure we've seen that before yeah, I mean, either. It's highly unusual to be um, negotiating with race control, but um, uh, I think there's an awful lot of lessons that can come out of today. How many times was Max told to give the lead back to Lewis through the several incidents that we saw? On which incident? Well, that's what I'm asking you, yeah. is that we saw so many. We saw that obviously great start right. from him on the third restart. Yes. Um, I'm just trying to think. That was one of the mediums, and when he took the when he took the lead, I don't think he needed to give the lead back on that one, did he? No. So, um, so that one was actually okay. I mean, obviously, um, when when they ran wide at, at turn one, both of the drivers went off. We felt that both drivers had, you know, um, there was no unfair advantage that both had gone in deep. Um, the race office then, you know, instructed us to give it back, so we chose to give it back. Um, and then I don't know what Lewis was doing because, you know, obviously Max lifted. Um, I don't know whether he didn't want to pass him before the DRS line or, or whatever it was, but, uh, you know, he just drove, you could hear he's lifted. Um, and, uh, you know, there was no unusual brake pressure or anything like that from Max, so it was... Uh, very, very strange to have Lewis drive directly straight up the back of the car. Were you surprised by the five-second penalty that was therefore given? Well, we knew that they were, you know, looking at that penalty, and and then you know, obviously, I was surprised at at being that awarded, having given the place back. But um, now there's an incident to look at, obviously, where um, Lewis has driven up the back of uh, you know Max's car. So that's frustrating. It's annoying. Um, you know, got a week to regroup. It's uh, been a big blow in the constructors, you know, losing Checo early on in the race. So, um, so we got one chance. Finally, looking back, would you do anything differently this evening? I don't think so. I don't think, I'd look, they got such a fast car, sector two and three. I think, again, Max has been a hero uh, in a car that's not as quick as the Mercedes to, to take the fight to, to them. And I, I think, um, yeah, you know, he's driven uh, amazingly. Um, you know, all year, and uh, it's a great shame that, uh, you know, we didn't manage to win that one, but we got one more shot. You do indeed. Level on points going into Abu Dhabi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian, for your time. Hard luck today. Measured and calm from both team bosses there, I think something of a surprise. I thought Christian would be furious. Yeah, I think they were, both of them, they were really calm, uh, even Toto, uh, and I would say... Yeah, maybe it's not the right time to speak. Let's wait. You know, the week will start. Uh, I think maybe we're gonna we will see some uh, some talks around. Uh, but uh, they were calmer than what I thought. Same. Uh, Valtteri Bottas might not be calm. He just had a run to third place that he wasn't expecting, crossing the line narrowly by the slimmest of margins ahead of Esteban Ocon. Let's hear from the third place podium man. Well then, Valtteri, that was quite a finish. You must be delighted to have got that on the line. Yeah, it's, it makes a difference, you know, to be fourth or third. Obviously, yeah, Esteban had a, had a good race and uh, they were actually surprisingly quick and it was not easy to get him, but uh, yeah, got him just at the end. Uh, just kept pushing and it was worth it today not to give up. It was quite a race for you. That start was perfect and then it didn't quite unravel with the red flags and the VS season as you would have hoped yeah, the, the, you know, the first red flag really had us over. Um, yeah, we, we stayed with the hard tyre and lost the position to a couple of cars on the restart. Um, so definitely not, not easy, but uh, yeah, still we, we kept pushing and 
I'm glad we, we did get there. And collectively, collectively for the Constructors' Championship, this was a huge result. Yeah, yeah, good day for that. And obviously Lewis and Max now in, on equal points. It's going to be a pretty exciting race in Abu Dhabi. Love it here from Valtteri. Uh, that is pretty much all we've got time for, Felipe and folks at home. So why don't we run down the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships at the end of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And as we have said, and wouldn't you know it, uh, there is the gap in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes on 587, Red Bull on 559. It's not impossible that Red Bull can win this Constructors' Championship, but they've got an awful lot of work to do in Abu Dhabi. Ferrari looking pretty comfortable now in third. Then it's McLaren and Alpine ahead of Alpha Tauri, Aston Martin, Williams, Alfa Romeo and Haas. In the Drivers' Championship, It is, of course, completely level at the top. 369 and a half points, placed 369 and a half points. Valtteri Bottas on 218. Sergio Perez on 190. Then Leclerc moving four points clear of Lando Norris in fifth and sixth. Carlos Sainz down on 149 and a half. They can all change at the last race. Daniel Ricciardo then in eighth. Pierre Gasly is ninth. Fernando Alonso is 10th. Completing the Lineup: up Ocon 11, Vettel P12, then Stroll and Sonoda, Russell, Raikkonen and Latifi, Giovinazzi on three points, then Schumacher, Kubica and Mazepin get to score. The Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is, of course, the last race of the season and takes place in just a few days time. On Friday, join us at 4.30 local time for practice one, then 8 p.m. for practice two. Saturday, 5 p.m. for practice, 8 p.m. again for qualifying and the race, the all-important race. 8.30 p.m. local time, Lewis Hamilton versus Max Verstappen for the Formula One World Championship. Felipe, what a season we've had. What an amazing battle between these two guys. And I think if, if today has proved anything, and if we didn't already know it, these guys will give every last ounce of themselves to win this championship. What a season. Uh, amazing uh, championship that we are really lucky to, uh, to be here to watch. Uh, and uh, last race, last race, <laughs> you, know, you know, the Formula One drivers, they will try everything they can uh, to score as much points as they can. The, the fighting between the teams, between the drivers, so really don't forget to be there watching everything that's going to happen in Abu Dhabi. It's going to be amazing. Uh, this weekend, of course, was tinged with, with sadness, Felipe. We lost yeah. Sir Frank Williams in the week, uh, a man who you know, you knew so well. Uh, a lovely guy. What are your memories of, of Sir Frank? Well, Sir Frank Williams is uh, uh, somebody that uh, I really had a big and lucky chance to work with together four years. Uh, I remember so well when uh, I arrived. I was still racing for Ferrari in Suzuka. I took the plane, landing in London, uh, and he wanted to speak to me in the in, in, in the hotel in the in the middle of the inside the, the airport. And uh, when I spoke to him for the first time, because I always say hello, Frank, how are you? But never really, I, I, I didn't know him so well. So when I had like a couple of hours talking to him. I want to be there. I want to race for Williams and I will be part of the Williams team because he's just amazing for everything that he did, building the, the, the team from zero, uh, you know, winning many championships, many races, uh, the way he was working with the people. Uh, he, he, I, every day I was going to Williams, I was going to his office to have a coffee with him. And he's always the question was like, what we need to improve in the car, how we will make the car quicker how we will make the car more competitive, how we will, you know, go back to, the, to, the, to fight for victories. So this was everything that he has in his mind every day, working every day in the office, even sleeping there. So he's somebody that uh, he will stay in my heart. So it was a big pleasure for me to work with him here. Look, show to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to be little 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 part of uh, his amazing career that he has and also as a person as frank williams 
It was uh, an incredible career, as you say. Frank uh, was the most uh, amazing man, doggedly determined, uh, an inspiration uh, for people both within this paddock and outside yeah. it, a man who lived his passion, and his passion was Formula One. Uh, so Frank Williams is every part uh, just an integral piece of the fabric of this sport, as much as Enzo Ferrari, so Frank Williams, whose team sits second in the all-time list of world champions, uh, is every bit that important. He will be sadly missed by us all. Frank was such a, an icon and such a legend within Formula One and just such a, an amazing human being, such an amazing personality. Frank, remember definitely as a, as a friend, as a, a character that motivated a lot of people. I'm not gonna miss him, and um, but I'm not gonna be the only one. Frank was one of my favorite people in this industry. Just generally one of the kindest people and realest people that I had met.